Hello and welcome. My name is Sheep Thief, and today I will be coming at you with some Dominions 5 Warriors of the Faith multiplayer online gameplay. Um, yeah, so this is an interesting turn. Um, we could start with uh, the war, as usual. Uh, we took this province a turn before. We're moving um, troops our elite troops here to take it uh, and our like siege force got attacked and there was a battle or more came at us with uh, I think that's pretty much everything that's in his uh, in his palisades but he did um, kind of uh, mess with us because my bats landed and got kind of chopped up by these uh, legionnaires and their morale isn't great so they left kind of scattered to the wind as usual but we defeated the uh, the force not much to really say run them down chariots throwing the javelins for some reason, whatever. Um, and yeah, so next turn we'll crack the fort, the turn after that we'll take it, and that will be the end of Irmor. Unfortunately, we have uh, bigger problems to deal with. Um, actually, I guess there's uh, another battle that we could look at, which is, again, between Agartha and Fomoria. Uh It looks like Agartha attacked him. Agartha is AI, so... Um, but it did produce a, an air gem dump, which is good for me, I guess. I think Rain of Stones just came out, is that what's going on? Yeah, definitely a pretty big battle. Uh, but again, just between AI and uh, all those ohms, but not enough uh, troops to take advantage of all the paralysis. So they get kind of chewed up by the air elementals, stun themselves with lightning strikes, and speed it up. Basically, get run over. I do want to take a look at this guy. Vine Shield, Frostband, Air Gems. I mean, definitely killable through a variety of different means, so. But Air 4, or that's, that's, uh. He must just be a Lightning Striker. But yeah, um, which. What else? Let me look at my notes. Yeah, uh, another big thing is that Niflheim has staled, and it looks like we've got about three hours left in the turn, and it looks like he might do it again. So, um, I've sent him a message saying, um, ending our NAP. I can't even remember if we had an NAP, but I'm going to say, I mean, it's going to take me about three turns to get my troops ready to attack him, so I'm ending the NAP and bringing the Earth Melkarts back in. This one's coming in, this one's coming in, and then this one is coming in from over here. Um, and we're just going to start taking his territory. Uh, we'll also take Helheim's territory, but he's AI, so I'm not going to... We did have an NAP, but he's AI now, so I don't think I have to end an NAP to an AI. Um, and it seems like Ulm is preoccupied with Marverni at the moment. Um, so I think we can poach this this land here. Um, maybe have one Melkart take Helheim turf, because this, this Ulm was going after this the whole game. So I think if we take that more carefully, we can not trigger him, because he's a little bit unpredictable. So... I don't want to like have him just be like, all right, you know what, I'm just going for Hinam. 
I think I could beat him. I just don't want to deal with it right now. So, um, yeah. Melkart's coming in um, for Niflheim. Um, Fomoria sent us a message. Uh, I'll read it. From what I can tell, Mekone should be weakened by his war with Agartha. I have very little idea what Niflheim is up to, but I think they haven't been in any war so far, so no idea about how strong they are. But Niflheim should be somewhat upkeep limited since they haven't taken much land. Not sure Niflheim could not sure Niflheim could hold a huge sacred stack in reserve and rush them at someone if the opportunity presents itself. The war against Agartha goes decent so far. Agartha going AI was probably more of a morale decision. He still has a not insignificant amount of forces around, but I should clean him up in the next couple of turns depending on if I can actually kill his stupid monolith or not. Worst case scenario, I have to wait like three turns to get my great swords of sharpness to the front. So we actually saw him sort of fail against that monolith the turn before this. If you want to watch the previous episode, you can watch that battle. Uh, and that, that province where we just watched the battle in this turn is the monolith province. So he's going to have to try to kill that again. Uh, yeah, so... Um, Great Swords of Sharpness is a Earth 2 item. So he has at least Earth 2. Um, but we didn't give him Earth Boots, so it's not our fault. Uh, yeah, we've, we have this one scout here that I'm going to leave there just because I want to watch these battles. It's also good. I mean, I've got vision of his sacred stack, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, the other information he gives it, gave us is that Niflheim isn't that big. Another reason that we should just start taking his territory. It'd be really nice to get this throne. I think that might be the first step. I don't really want to engage this stack of uh, sacreds. Um, I just don't want to deal with that at all. Uh, so we'll probably just take everything around it. Uh, we've got one spy here. We're going to like... That's Niflheim's capital, so we're going to avoid that because there might be a lot of PD there. It looks like he is putting at least some money into PD. Uh, we're leaving that one there. Um, now, what else? Uh, the big things are research. Um, we've got, we're finally getting towards Blood 7, and it'll take us five turns to get there. 2k divided by... 400. It is 21, but uh, it will be at least, or at the most, five turns. Because if we're like short some, I'm just going to use my uh, pretender to get it on that fifth turn. Um, and also, we've got more majors coming out and everything, so we should be okay. Um, But yeah, we've switched around to research a little bit. Um, the first thing that I realized is, as we talked about yesterday for the teleporting mill carts, the astral mill carts, um, we need Thaumaturgy 3 for the uh, for a teleport, as you can see here, teleport. Um, then we're going to get construction 6 after that. Um, 5 turns is actually not that far away. so. We're going to hit Blood 7 and get our Vampire Lord out. And so, I'm just thinking beyond that at this point. We'll hit Thaumaturgy 3, I think, in one turn. Um, then Construction 6 will unlock a ton of stuff for us. Thaumaturgy 5 is for um, Soul Slay, because the big thing that we're doing after all this is uh, Mind Hunt. I realized... so. The Fomorian Druids, I've seen him do it multiple times, he, he cloud trapezes Fomorian Druids in somewhere and dumps, um, if he's confident, he just has them have a frost brand and um, some armor and they like kill a small amount of PD. If he's not, he dumps air elementals. Um, but what we can do with Mind Hunt is kill those things remotely. The Druids, I actually, I did not check this, but let's, oops, let's make sure, 
they don't have Astral, I think. Fomorian Druid? Yeah, they do not have Astral. So, we will kill them. Um, and this happens... So, Mind Hunt... What, the one question I have about Mind Hunt is, does it happen in Magic Phase? I assume so. Which means I don't have to like predict where his Druids are going to go. They'll attack and probably take a province, but then we mind hunt them and they die, and then we can take it back. And he probably won't even PD, he might PD dump it, but I'd, I, I, we can we can take back provinces with Melkarts or, or our troops or whatever. So, um, we'll have at least three of them doing this. Three astral balls um, with, um, they will be able to, and it seems like he's doing it in Paris. So, if if he's, it seems like he sends two uh, druids at a time. But if it's more than that, then if it's less than that, then that's good. if he does one at a time, um, behind our lines basically, then that's good because we can kill three of them per turn. I think fairly uh, consistently. Um, the question will be: Let's look at them again. Their magic resistance fifteen. They have good magic resistance. I don't know what our magic penetration will be, but um, let's see. Where do you see magic penetration? Um, is it precision? Magic leader, combat speed, defense skill, hit point size, magic resistance, no. Morale, leadership. It's definitely not any of those. Attack skill, defense skill. I don't know if it's an innate trait. Um, Uh, yeah, that's a lot of magic resistance they have, so this might not be as uh, good as I thought. But we can, we can at least give it a shot, and, you know, we could take out other, like, things than just the druids. We can take out his commanders and stuff, so anyway, um, yeah, we're gonna, I'll show you, I mean, before I looked at their magic resistance, I was still gonna do this, but we're going to buff up their magic penetration a lot with everything we can. Um, spell focus, rune smasher, we can make both of those, and we have Dorbin hammers, so we can do it. These will be two or three, I can't remember what the discount is, I think it's two. So it'll be three astral pearls for each of these. We get seven astral pearls a turn, um, so we can basically break even with that, although we will have to also make uh, starshine skull caps for each of these, so. Uh, there we go. So we're looking at f for each um, ball a eight plus six, fourteen gem investment, uh, which we can afford. We get seven per turn, so we're basically losing seven per turn on each of them. But then we'll be done. Uh, so it's not like every turn we have to do that. Uh, but yeah, each of them will get a starshine skull cap, uh, which is another reason we'll get. We have to get construction six, but we're, that that's happening before we get mind hunt. So, um, I have the void. We'll uh, give them two magic penetration, rune smasher, two magic penetration, spell focus, one magic penetration for a total of five. Um, I don't know. I guess I have to look up how that works. Um, Additional skill and path over two rounding up. Random number. Hard to resist, easy to resist. What did what is mind hunt?
what is it? Oh, it's six. Okay, evocation six. So it's it, we're we're a ways off, but um, okay. So mind hunt just finds it, and then it casts soul slay. Which magic res resistance negates, so it's not easily. So we might be just, it might be just good enough um, to kill those druids every now and then. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, we won't have any additional skill in the path. Caster wins ties. So I think on average we will succeed, but it won't be 100% um, of the time. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's Mind Hunt. Um, that's basically our, our research path right now. Uh, other than that, um, <clears throat> I need to confirm that Mind Hunting happens in Magic Face, because it sort of seems cheap that you could just hit them while I sort of would have thought that you would need to predict where they're going, but if it's happening in magic phase, I should, if I wanted to do it on this Cohen right here, even if since even if he's moving here, if I mund hunt him right there, he should die. I think. Uh, I could be mistaken. Not really sure. Sixteen magic resistance. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, vampires are going to be here soon. So this turn we got, we had 35 blood slaves total. We got 30 from hunting. Um, and then we have plus 3 of, on our own. Not great, <coughs> considering that everyone was blood hunting. Uh, we're adding one more province in. So if we're averaging about 15 per, per, per province, that puts us at 45 on average. Uh... I watched a video about blood hunting, and I think we uh, might need to get more Cohens. But I think uh, at least three turns before we get um, the vampires, we'll start saving up and make sure we have enough for a vampire. Because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to leave these these Cohen's blood hunting in these provinces will have like a three stack in, in provinces that are eligible. Uh, but I think we're going to bleed or more dry with the vampire lords. Um, just to have consistent good blood hunting coming in. Um, I think, and I, because I think we're about to come to a head here against Fomoria. I think these guys are going to peter out. It's basically at this point <clears throat> Marverni and Ulm who are at war. Fomoria and me and Mikone. Niflheim is stealing. Agartha went AI. And we could even say Mikone Fomoria and me because this war has dragged on so long and I do not see Ulm like really owning that hard. So I think these two are like tearing each other to shreds, and at some point when I'm ready, I'm gonna cap. I'm gonna like invade one or both of them. Uh, so we will see. Uh, the big players are Fomoria and me, um, and I think he's he's running out of targets. I'm running out of targets. We're definitely both thinking. All right, this is going to be the big fight between me and Fomoria, and for him, yeah. So we will. We need to have blood slaves soon. Um, I don't think this is going to drag on as late as I thought it did. I think I boomed, so to speak, a little too hard. Although I have a lot of territory and I haven't gotten bogged down in wars. Um, so it's I'm, I don't think I think I can win this game for sure, but I need blood slaves. The, the big issues are lack of blood slaves and lack of research. So we're gonna get the vampire out, have him start blood hunting, 
uh, and we're just going to bleed it more dry. The other thing I'm missing is money, but I think when I take, when I get some of this unrest down in these provinces, like, good god, it'll get a little better. We're saving 200 gold this turn, because next turn we need to get out another ball or Melkar and another wizard, I think. Yeah, so we we need a lot of money next turn. Um, we're getting a uh, lab here to get ready for this to be blood hunted. Um, and as soon as this has enough, we're really close. Uh, the, so I, I guess we could just do an unrest sort of debriefing. We've got this guy getting rid of the unrest here. Um, and when he's done, I'm going to bring him over here to get these imps. Uh, so I was thinking, okay, so if we... The unrest generated per turn with blood slaves is a little complicated, complicated, but if we get, uh, if we have a lot of vampires here, the unrest generated is going to start to be like 100 plus per turn, which means wolves are not actually that efficient. I thought they were, but I guess not. It's 0.7, so a stack of 40 of these is gives you 28 patrol strength. The imps are really good. This is 47, that's uh, 94 p patrol strength. So 50 imps is 100 patrol strength. Uh, and we get, I think we get like 8 per turn with the summon. Uh, let's see. Summon Mazakim. Yeah, you get 8. So 8 times, what's 100 divided by 8? Um, 12 times 3. So times 3, 12 times 3 is 36. For 36 gems, we get, um, oh wait, am I right about that? 80 plus, so yeah, 96, 96 of them are, uh, Well, wait. We only need uh, we only need fifty to get uh, to a hundred patrol strength. So we need fifty divided by eight is like six, six point something. So six castings of Mazakim, six times three is eighteen. So eighteen nature gems, we get a hundred patrol strength. That's pretty good. Uh, I I think that summoning the werewolves was kind of a waste. This is thirty six right here, and they have like not. They are not producing as much patrol strength, even close, as the imps are. So, kind of a waste of gems. Whatever, it's free, um, free uh, patrol. Whatever. It, I'm not. It's not the end of the world. Um, but we, and we could maybe like thug these out. They have regen and invulnerability. Yeah, that might be what we do with them. Um. And I mean, they're kind of paying for themselves, so whatever. Uh, it's better, doing this was better than just summoning the wolves. If we'd just been summoning wolves this whole time, that would have been really bad. Like, these wolves were all summoned with just summoned pack of wolves, and that it was, like, not a good use of gems. We should have definitely just done the imps. Uh, so, we're going to keep the Mazakim coming out. Um and yeah uh we're getting another mound king over here cuz the sort of logistical issues of moving troops and all these skeletons and all these wolves and imps uh demands more mound kings so we're going to we're going to break another one of those out um yeah um so yeah, the end of the story is we're getting Vampire Lords soon. Um, so we need to prepare for it. We're going to bleed or more dry. That's the plan. Um, and hopefully the goal is like like 100 or more Blood Slaves per turn. So I think we're going to maybe do a Vampire Lord. Uh, have him start hunting. And then the goal is like 3 or 4 or maybe like... I think the top that we could do is like nine blood hunter vampire lords here, but that's like a thousand blood slaves. But they would start to pay for themselves. So I don't know. That might be. I might be off on the numbers there. I might be being too hopeful. But even just having one will boost our uh, our blood hunting economy a lot. Um, and I just don't. The money that these cones take up 
means I'm going basically the question and you can see it here in the notepad was do we need more Cohen's do we need another stack in a like like here maybe and the answer is maybe we might have to do that but for now we're gonna risk it and just um, get the vampire lord out and see if this cuts it because uh, with each of these things that we do it's a we need to build a lab which is another 500 gold and then when you do it you like wear down the province which wears down your gold so it becomes a gold problem so we're gonna risk it for now if we we have like two more turns before we're three turns away from getting the vampire lord so we'll kind of experiment a little more and see where we're at uh if we need to add another stack of coins then we'll do it um what else do we have here uh and yeah this is just the question of should we go to ermor before i was wondering should i just put all these coins on top of ermor now and start just bleeding ermor dry now uh but i think i'm going to keep doing what i'm doing it's not like terrible 15 per turn whatever i'll take it um in each province sometimes more so We'll just do both for now. Um, but yeah, this leads us into our blood summons. So what I have now uh, is two castings of demon knights. Uh, we did Ritual of the Five Gates. I'll show you the demons. We got a devil. We've seen those before. A fiend of darkness, which is better than I thought it was. You can get this earlier, but you can't really spam them out. So I think people don't usually get them. I know there's a spell at blood nine, which you can like get a ton of them per turn, but they're good. Like they have a lot of strength. They have more strength than a devil. Good attack skill, good defense, not terrible protection. Um, and then this poison attack, um, two poison attacks, magic damage, you know, like, um, and then flying. So they're basically just going to be in the same squad is the devils and just have a really hard backline attack uh and then also we if we get enough of these things they're good against thugs or devils are i don't know if fiends of darkness are considered to be good against thugs but we we could definitely uh have them on anti-thug duty and then we're starting finally to get these demon knights out um very strong units great protection and everything uh, it'll be really good against the humans with legions of steel and bloodlust. We've already been over all, all this. Um, so what I was thinking right now, and then I guess I'll finish this. The frost fiends are the ones that are sort of the most useless to us, but we'll find they're not bad and we'll find something for them to do. And then storm demons are really good. They like spam lightning. They have uh, 10 lightning attacks, range 40 just strong just really good they're ethereal and then they have like a stunning attack once they run out of ammunition uh, so yeah that's ritual of the five gates it'd be nice if we could pump that out every turn in 10 with 10 of those we'd have 10 more demon knights it would just be good like especially this squad would have 20 units in it and it'd be a really scary backline attack 10 lightning strikes really good the frost blasts we will take it um, yeah but we didn't have enough to do it again so what I did was two demon knights and I'm sort of questioning that because um, we could do serene as you've seen before we have the serene and it's really just a question of what do we do with our blood slaves these will be good against Fomoria 16 attacks with bloodlust goes up to like 20 damage uh, and then they're blessed, so they do even more. And there's three of them. So, like, what we're going to do is have a huge swarm of them on a flank on attack rear. What I did wrong the last time is on the flank attack cl closest. We're going to attack rear because they're going to punch through the line on the front and then go around and either wrap around onto the front line fight or go to the back and just destroy things. They're berserk. We've been over them. Uh, that'll be good against Fomoria, but not very good against really high density um, human armies. So these are good against human armies, not as great against Fomorian sacreds and stuff. These are good against Fomorian like giants. They'll they'll they literally just do like we've been over this before, but it's like 60 plus damage per 
per one of these. So like giants just get smacked. They get smacked really hard by these. Um, and I can't tell if I've just hyped myself into casting them instead. We have to choose. So two demon knights versus five serim, but then we'd also have extra for like either saving or I mean, what else do we even want here? Uh, I would do a devil if I had a fire, any fire cross path in my Melkarts or balls, but I don't. We could do another fiend of darkness. That's only five blood slaves. 23 plus. We could do Serim, 23, and then two fiends. That might be better. Although, if we want to get this... I don't know. I think we'll get the two demon knights, because even five... If we have five, that's enough to like spread fear really hard in a human army. And they're really good. I think we'll leave it for now, but if we get like the same amount, I think it's probably more cost-efficient to get... Uh, The Serim is one of our best spells. Like, we need that spell to, like, flood to make huge, scary armies. So, I don't want to, like... Oh, wait. We, uh... Messed that up. Demon Knight. Okay. Um... Uh, I think we're going to leave this as is. The two Demon Knights will do a lot of work against humans, so... We'll see. Uh... I don't know. It's not an efficient spell at all. Let's just do it. We'll waste Blood Slaves for now. Because we three Demon Knights isn't enough. Five plus. As soon as we have five, that's enough for like a squad of them to at least be on a flank and doing scary stuff. We need five for the demon knights to be effective at all. So let's get that out of the way. And then in the future, we'll just use um, Ritual of the Five Gates to get them out. And then everything else can go into Serim. Anything plus five is gravy. Once we get to like 20, that's like an army on its own. But um, we're not quite there yet. We just don't have the blood income yet. So we're going to leave it as is. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is get boosters out, but like I said, we don't have enough, um, but we can make them. So we need, each booster is 40 blood slaves, armor of souls is 40 blood slaves, and brazen vessel is 40 blood slaves. We actually just don't need it right now, uh, but we will need it. So that's another thing to save up for. So we need to save up for boosters. Uh, we need to save up for sanguine dousing rods. The last five that we spent are going into this dousing rod for uh, blood hunting. We need one of those, at least one of those per turn. So uh, then we need like boosters, which is 40 each. At construction six, we'll get out blood uh, bloodthorn, which is way cheaper. Uh, but for now, we're gonna have to deal with that if we need it. We actually might just, we'll just make that situation. I don't think we need much higher blood right now. Eventually we will, but not now. So that's not, boosters are not top priority in blood right now. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I guess the only other things are my movements. Like I said, the Melkarts are coming down here. Uh, I'm going to park them on this throne. It's already down to 300 population, so it doesn't matter if the uh, Melkarts destroy it. Um, we, and we'll start taking territory, uh, which is just more gold. We need it, uh, and we just, and we don't want Fomoria taking this. If Amoria is busy with Agartha, we should take this as a blessing. It'll probably take him another few turns if we start taking Niflheim. Uh, that will be that will be good. Uh, so yeah, I guess the only other thing is a message to Fomoria. I think we already know about the archers that we're building up. Um, we're still pumping out owl quills. At construction six, we could start getting lightless lanterns for sure. Um, 
maybe another reason why getting construction six before blood seven would have been a good idea but for now let's uh we're almost at blood seven and the blood slaves are we are like the center of our strategy so we're gonna get that done uh Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to talk about, except the message to Fomora, so we'll send that now. Uh, let's read over what he said again. Mikone should be weakened, so he's not attacking Mikone, so Mikone's still alive and well. Very little idea what Nifl is up to. We know he's stealing. But he doesn't have much land. Uh... I'm basically just going to tell him um, I'm attacking Niflheim. So send text message to Fomoria. Um, greetings, friend. Um, I have ended my NAP with Niflheim. And we'll start attacking him in the next few turns. I am not committing all my resources to it, however, I, I want to keep an eye on Ulm and Marverny. Because I'm worried the victor could be a problem. Like I said, I, I want to like divert, I want to keep Fomoria worried about everyone but me uh, for now. So. Um, any info on Mikone's strategies or army slash mage composition? Have you seen what he's doing? Uh, also, yeah, monoliths can be a nightmare. Good luck with. Um, what size are. Actually, no, I'm not going to give him any tips. What am I talking about? Um, be careful. The AI might script it really well, too. Um, anyways, keep me informed. Uh, I keep saying that. Anyways, good luck. Stay in contact. The Giants of Hinom. Do I, should I tell him? I just don't want him to think that I'm going to be busy with Nephilim. I think this is good. I think this is good. Alright. Uh, okay. Let's call it there. What are we at on time? 39. Not bad. Um, am I forgetting anything? Nope. Just wish me luck. I need as many blood slaves as I can get. The more, the better. So. Yeah. Catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you for watching.